All right, we're going to go back a little bit to the Lewis acid and bases definition. So the Lewis acid and base definition actually helps explain why it is that complex ions form and why they end up being acidic, so they are affected by pH. So many trans transitional metal ions, such as aluminum, so transition metals, if we go to the periodic table, those are, as you probably know by now, the ones in the middle down at the bottom. Let me get to my, there it is. So right here, our transition metals would be these guys down in here. Okay. And they will form ions, and they always form cations with variable charges. So those cations, if you end up with a high enough uh, reagent level, you have you end up forming these complex ions. Let's get back to our other screen. Uh, so things like ammonia, hydroxide, and chloride, and cyanate commonly act as Lewis ba bases because they have electron pairs to donate. So if we look at ammonia, ammonia has the lone pair right there, the hydroxides have three lone pairs, and the cyanate has one there and one there. So with those lone pairs, those are electron pairs that they can donate to someone else which is why the, these three things act as bases. Hydroxide, you obviously knew that acts as a base because it's an OH. Ammonia, uh, this is why it acts as a base, and cyanate, why it acts as a base as well. And that's because of those lone pairs that they have to donate. So since they can donate those electron pairs, the things that they donate them to, the electron pairs acceptors, become Lewis acids. And in the case of complex ions, those would be the transition metal ions that do it. And these molecules down here that act as the uh, electron pair donors, those are called in complex ion formations ligands. Okay, so we do call those ligands. Ligands are the ones that surround the central atom, that surround the uh, Lewis acid, however it may be. Okay. This type of reaction does not happen very easily. There are certain conditions that have to be met in order for it to react. Because if you look at Ag+, and then NH3, there isn't really a charge on NH3. Okay, so this reaction, it's not going to be like your typical you know, ionic bond forming where plus attracts minus. What causes this to happen is a couple keywords, and those keywords mentioned in class are excess. Excess. You know, so if you see the word excess or concentrated, those indicate usually a complex ion is going to form. So if you have an excess of ammonia or a very concentrated, concentrated ammonia, that's going to be an indication that this reaction could happen. And so what happens for this reaction to form is the lone pairs that are on ammonia. Let's actually go to a blank screen to draw this. Okay. So you have the There we go, Ag+. Plus. Then you have those ammonias, so you've got NH3. And it's got a lone pair, and you've got yourself another NH3. And what's it got? Yeah, it's got a lone pair too. So a Lewis base is a molecule that donates an electron pair, and so ammonia is, an elect is a... Uh, Lewis base because it will take this lone pair right here and it will donate it to the silver. It's going to, that plus charge here on the silver is going to attract that lone pair and so that makes this an acid and this guy a base. One of the things that makes complex ions so complex is that the transition metal, so the central guy, can actually be surrounded by multiple ligands. And these ammonias would be our ligands. So it can be surrounded by multiple Lewis bases. And so this guy right here can also donate its lone pair. And it's going to be not lone pair. Yeah, lone pair. So it's also going to be a base because it's going to donate that electron pair to silver as well. So if we go back to our other screen and look at what this molecule looks like, we can see it right here. <clears throat> so we've got silver. We've got those two ammonias with their donated electrons here in the middle. What this does is it creates this ion, and we draw it in brackets with a plus out there, because this entire molecule has a plus charge. That's because we took two neutral ammonias and attached it to the positively charged silver, which created a positively charged complex ion. 
So let's talk about solubility as transition matter, as complex ions are formed. So if we look at this reaction right here, AgCl, silver chloride, it's considered fairly insoluble. Silver chloride is, so it does, the little it does ionize, ionizes into Ag plus and Cl minus. So this has a very, very low solubility. If you look at your Gen Chem solubility rules, this would be an insoluble compound. But if we add in ammonia to this, we're going to start forming these complex ions, this silver uh, amine right here. And so as this happens, let's think of, who's that? Le Chatelier, you say? Yeah. Let's think of how Le Chatelier would play into this. So we've got these two systems that are occurring at the same time, so don't think of those as happening in two separate reaction vessels, happening at the same time. So silver right here, Ag+, plus, is used up by the ammonia to create this complex ion. So what's going to happen, this silver right here is going to get used up in this reaction. So if the silver gets used up, we are stressing the system. And if we stress the system, what's the system going to do? It's going to shift to relieve that stress. So we take away these silvers, more of this is going to dissociate. And so it's going to shift this first reaction over to the right, therefore uh, creating more solubility of the silver chloride. And as this dissolves and creates more silvers, those more silvers are going to get used up by the ammonia to generate more of this complex ion, so more of this will dissolve. And so we can actually drive the solubility of silver chloride over and create it, cause it to ionize just by adding this ammonia to it. And it's because of that Lewis acid-base interaction. So the overall net ionic equation then, so that silver is created and then used up again, as it drives it over, AgCl plus ammonia would give us this ammonia complex, and then the chloride ions. All right, here's a practice one that we would see. A copper 2 nitrate solution is mixed with a concentrated ammonia solution. So if right now you were sitting on the AP test and you were on question 4 and you saw this word right here, concentrated, what should you think? You should think this must be a complex ion problem. And if you thought that, you would be correct. So let's take a look at this problem. Copper 2 nitrate solution is mixed with concentrated ammonia solution. Let's go to a blank screen to look at this one and see what happens. So copper 2, that's Cu2+. Plus. And then we've got ammonia. So ammonia is NH3. And it has those lone pairs. So remember, ammonia acts as a Lewis base. And so we can take those electrons and we can donate them to the copper. So I know what you're saying, Mr. Jones. How many ammonias would be able to attach to the copper? Is it one? No. Is it two? No, it's not two either. It would actually be up to four. So the rule of thumb is whatever the charge on the transition metal is, and what's the charge on this transition metal? It's plus two. So whatever the charge is, you double that number, so that one right there, the two, and that tells you how many ligands can, be, can attach to the central atom or to the central molecule. So this guy right here, the Cu2+, plus, since it's a two, that means four ammonias can attach to it. And voila, four molecules there. So since it's Cu2+, plus, then four of them can attach to the central atom. So all four of these ammonias would attach themselves to the copper in the middle. Okay, it'd be attracted. They'd form that complex around it. This positive two charge here on this transition metal is going to attract all these lone pairs, making all of these guys bases. And the guy in the middle, the electron acceptor, is going to be your acid. So then what would the formula of this molecule be? Well, we've got copper. We've got one of those. We have ammonia, but we've got four of those, NH3. And there's four of them. And each of these ammonias is neutral, so they're not going to affect the charge. The copper is 2 plus with nothing to counteract that, and so this entire molecule then would be 2 plus. And sometimes you'll see this written in parentheses or in brackets like that with the 2 plus on the outside. So if we go back to our other screen, the net ionic equation for this one would be Cu, oops, sorry guys. 
Cu2 plus, the nitrate's not going to do anything. And it is going to react with four, that's right, four ammonias. Complex ions are set up at equilibrium. And it'd be Cu, NH3, four, two plus. And there you go. Let's talk about coordination numbers. So these numbers right here, you don't have to memorize these. Like I said, the rule of thumb is whatever the charge is, double that number, and that tells you what the coordination number is. So coordination number is how many ligands can attach to a particular transition metal. So these would be your transition cations. This would be your coordination number. So this is how many ammonias or chlorides or hydroxides could attach in a complex ion formation. And so, you know, like I said, plus two, typically plus four, here we've got plus two, so four. On question four on the AP test, they usually accept a wide range of answers. They're just looking to see that you set up a complex ion. And so this coordination number, you're not locked into any of those. In fact, typically with like zinc, they would say any coordination number between four and six would be okay, or sometimes even between two and six. So a wide range of answers you can put in there. But the rule of thumb is, whatever the charge is, double it, and that's how many you would attach to it. So you're just saying the same thing, excess, concentrated, saturated is another word that you're going to see. The reason those are significant for complex ions is because if you've got something like zinc 2+, plus, and they tell you, oh, you're adding some hydroxides to that, and there's no, no indication about excess, concentrated, saturated, anything like that, what's going to happen with these two? They're just going to form your, your normal old run-of-the-mill ionic bond. So ZnOH2, so two hydroxides right there. That's it. That's all it's going to form. Nothing really exciting about that. But if you have concentrated or excess hydroxides, that means that those hydroxides, those OH minuses, oh, they want to stick to something, so they're going to find something that they can attach to. They don't like floating around all negative. And so they're going to act as Lewis bases, and they're going to donate their electrons over to this zinc. And since zinc is 2 plus, the rule of thumb then double it, that means four of these would be able to attach to the zinc. And so you have Z, Zn2 plus and four hydroxides attaching to it. So if we write this as a complex ion being formed, OH4, so four of those guys. And now the charge is going to be different. So we have one, we have the two plus from the zinc. And then we have four minus from the four hydroxides. So the overall charge then of this molecule would be two minus. Okay, so watch out for those words because that's what they mean. It's not going to be a straight up ionic bond. It's going to be the formation of a complex ion because you have so many of those ions and they want to attach to something. We'll do two practice problems here. For both of these, I would say pause the video, give it a shot, and then resume the video and check your answer. So for the first one, saturated solution of sodium cyanide is mixed with a solution of iron chloride. So go ahead and pause. And welcome back. So sodium cyanide is CN, and we're reacting with iron chloride. So sodium and chloride, they're not going to affect anything. They're going to produce sodium chloride, which is going to stay dissolved, so let's not even bother with it. Uh, iron, then, would be iron 2 plus. You should recognize it as a transition metal. Since it's a transition metal, that's probably going to be our central, our atom, our cation. And it is reacting with cyanide, cyanate, so Cn minus. So we're going to set up equilibrium here. Now if you flip back a couple slides and look at the coordination numbers, you'll see the coordination number for iron 2 plus is 6. Like I said, you don't need to memorize those, and if you were just going by the rule of the thumb, you would probably say that this is going to form Fe Cn4, in which case you would be okay. And since it's Cn4, that means we have 4 minus and 2 plus means the overall charge of this guy is going to be 2 minus. Now if you flip back a couple slides and you looked at the coordination number for iron, you'd see that its coordination number is 6. And so if you wrote it based upon its coordination number, it would be Fe 
cn6. And since now we have 6 minus, that means our charge is going to be 4 minus. Now on the AP test, on the answer key, you're going to see that they'll accept both of these. They probably even accept 3 minus, but they just want to see this complex ion formed that you didn't just do FeCN2. Okay, and just neutralize the charges and move on with life. They want you to notice that you've got a saturated solution, and so you form a complex ion. So either one of those answers would be perfectly okay. All right, here's another example. Solid silver chloride is sprinkled into a concentrated solution of sodium cyanide. Go ahead, pause, give it a shot. Maybe write the rule of thumb version and the uh, coordination number version if they're different. Yeah, they won't be different, so do whichever one tickles your fancy. And welcome back. So silver chloride, we're just dealing with the silver here. That's our transition metal. And it's being mixed with sodium cyanide, so that would be CN minus. And as always, we're going to set up that equilibrium. And I just read the question. So this is actually solid silver chloride, which means it's not just the ions. Since it's not going to be in a solution, it's AgCl because it's not dissolved. So watch out for those words. Solid silver chloride means it's not aqueous, which means it's not Cl minus, which means it's going to change on the other side. And we're mixing that with cyanide, so Cn. And since the coordination number and the charge of silver is plus one, the coordination number is going to be two. So that means two cyanides will attach to Ag. So it'd be Ag. CN2. And if we had two cyanides, that's, oh, sorry, two minus. And AG is plus. And so the net ionic charge is going to be uh, minus one. And since that cyanide is ripping away those AGs and making this complex ion, that means that silver is also going to have to dissociate and produce that Cl- minus as well in solution. So that's why writing it as a solid makes a difference because we're showing it as AgCl, a solid, being ionized, so those ions are being forced to separate it even though it's not normally soluble, into the chlorides in this complex ion.